Hey, I'm Kirsty, Uni's brand manager. At Uni, we're all about pizza. There are many ways to make great pizza and many different styles of pizza from all around the world. There's Detroit style, Roman thin crust, Chicago deep dish pizza, and so many more. But Naples is said to be the original home of true pizza. I've just spent the last 18 months living in Naples, so I know a thing or two about Neapolitan style pizza. It's one of our favorites here at UniHQ and we love it and we make it every single week. So, what exactly is Neapolitan style pizza? There's actually an organization in Naples called the Association of True Neapolitan Pizza that sets out all the official rules of making the real deal, which are pretty particular. That's why you often hear the term Neapolitan style, which typically means that the pizza has a certain style of base, featuring a dough made with zero zero flour, a raised generous crust that's chewy and a crisp base with a nice bite to it. The toppings are quite light. Traditionally, they're margarita or marinara, but these days there's a lot of creativity to the toppings used on Neapolitan style pizza. The most important factor for making awesome Neapolitan style pizza is the oven temperature. It needs to be super high so that the pizza cooks very quickly, which means you get a crisp base that's cooked through without drying out or feeling brittle, along with evenly melted cheese and well-cooked toppings. This is why it's so important that Uni pizza ovens are able to reach 500 degrees Celsius or 932 degrees Fahrenheit, so that they cook Neapolitan style pizza in just 60 seconds. When it comes to making your own Neapolitan style pizza, it's all about starting with high quality but simple ingredients. For a silky but strong dough, we use zero zero flour. This is a traditional Italian style of super finely ground flour with the right protein content for making a dough with good structure and elasticity. All you need to add to that flour is yeast, salt and water. Caputo is a well-known brand of Italian flour that we really like. We use Caputo Blue here to make our pizza dough throughout the week, but any good zero zero flour is great. When it comes to toppings, traditionally it's San Marzano tomatoes that are used to make the pizza sauce. They're a firm, sweet plum tomato that are typically grown in the area around Naples, and you can find them sold in cans. Again, if you can't find San Marzano tomatoes, go for any good quality tin tomatoes. The most classic toppings are really simple, featuring little more than fior di latte mozzarella, which is a soft cow's milk mozzarella, plus fresh basil and extra virgin olive oil. But if you start with a great pizza dough, then you can really do whatever you like with the toppings. Here's how to make our tried and tested Neapolitan style dough. This recipe makes five 12 inch pizzas or three 16 inch pizzas. And it's the same recipe we have in our cookbook and online. For equipment, you'll need electric scales, a stand mixer or a large bowl if mixing by hand, a proving tub, any kind of bowl you can cover or a tub with a lid is good, a dough scraper or a sharp knife, a proving tray or any tray you can cover and set aside, and last but not least, an uni pizza oven. For the ingredients, you'll need 300 grams of water, 10 grams of salt, 7 grams of fresh yeast or 3 grams of active dried yeast, and 500 grams of zero zero flour, plus a little extra flour for dusting your work surface. First of all, we place two thirds of the water into a bowl. Next, we take our saucepan that has the other third of the water. This has been brought to the boil. When we add this to the cold water, it brings the water up to the perfect temperature for activating yeast. So we just pour that in. Next, we need to add, obviously, the yeast and the salt. Today, we're using a stand mixer. You can, of course, do this process by hand. First of all, we take our flour. We have the zero zero flour, it's been pre-measured, and we add it to the mixer. We are using a dough hook to make sure that everything is mixed in nicely. That's the flour in. Next, what we need to do is we need to turn it on at a very low speed. And then finally, we start to add our mixture, which has the yeast and salt, but we add it very slowly.
Once the flour and water are combined, you want to leave it mixing at the same speed for around five to 10 minutes. You need to make sure that the dough looks firm and stretchy. Okay, so our dough looks ready now. Okay, just gonna add a little bit of flour to the work surface because we need to just neaten up the dough slightly before we leave it to bulk proof. We don't wanna do too much with it. We just basically wanna make sure that we have a nice round smooth ball. So this is looking nice and smooth. So now what I'm gonna do is place it in a bowl. Um, we're using a bowl today, but you can use a proving tub as well. Just make sure that whatever you use is fully covered today using a cover, but you can obviously use plastic wrap as well. I'm gonna leave this to prove in a warm place now for one to two hours. It will be ready when the dough has doubled in size. So here is some dough that's been proving for a couple of hours at room temperature. It's really soft, very shiny, um, and we also have a few lovely air bubbles as well. So you can see that it's really light, fluffy, and it's definitely ready to be turned into pizza. Now it's time to divide up and ball our dough. So what we need here is we need some scales and we need a sharp knife or a dough scraper. Kind of doubles up as both. Really important that we flour the work surface um, so it doesn't stick to the surface. Okay, now it's time to roughly divide this up into five parts and then from there we will weigh each of them. We want each of our balls to be 160 grams each. So if it's not quite right, we just take a little bit off another. Okay, so now it's time to shape these. Now this is how I like to do it. Um, so just gently moving it round and making sure you tuck that additional dough underneath. And then gently at the bottom, just pinching and spinning the dough round. Just so you have a neat little ball there. Once you have your five balls, what we need to do now is leave these to prove just to kind of settle before you cook for around about 20 minutes. So what we like to do is use a proving tree. Again, we need to lightly flour the bottom of this so that the dough balls don't stick. Make sure they're not sitting too close together. Otherwise you will just have one giant flat pizza. Really important that we remember to cover with a lid. If you don't have a proving tray, you can use a regular tray. Just remember to cover with plastic wrap or a cloth. Okay, so here we have our pizza dough balls. They have had their final 20 minute proof. This stage is really important because you want the dough to be super pliable so it's easier to work with. When you ball up the dough, the dough becomes quite tight and this final stage just makes it much easier for you to shape the dough to pizza. We flour the peel, just a little flour, make sure the dough doesn't stick. And then we take our dough ball. It's really important that we're quite gentle with it at this stage. So you just wanna scoop it up from underneath and then place it kind of shiny soft side down. From here, you just want to push out from the middle to the edges because you need to make sure that you leave that nice fat crust on the edge. Once you've pushed out from the edge to get that crust on both sides, you wanna pick up your dough and you start to do what we call the steering wheel, okay? So really gently, just turning it around, making sure that you're using your thumb and your forefinger to gently pull the dough, all the while making sure you have that nice, generous, thick, puffy crust. Once you've done that for a bit, you might notice that the dough in the middle is a little bit thicker. So if you use your hands like this and you just start to slowly pull the dough out. Again, takes a little bit of practice, but once you're there, you're there. Mm. 
And that's how you hand stretch a pizza. It's really not that difficult. Just have a few practices and don't worry if it's not round, it will still taste absolutely delicious, okay? So now I'm gonna make a classic Neapolitan style margarita. Before we top this pizza, we need to check that our uni oven is up to temperature. Now we have been preheating uni pro here for around about 30 minutes. So you want to have the oven to 500 Celsius or 932 Fahrenheit. Really Neapolitan style pizza shouldn't be cooked below 400 degrees Celsius. Make sure your pizza base is not sticking to the peel as a final check before you start to top. So first of all, we use the San Marzano tomatoes. Don't use too much because you don't want a sloppy pizza. Next, we add our mozzarella. Just tear it and sprinkle it around about the pizza. Again, don't use too much because you don't want an overloaded pizza because it makes it very difficult to get off the peel. Okay, next we add a little drizzle of olive oil and then a couple of sprigs of fresh basil. It smells absolutely wonderful. Now we're ready to cook. And there we have it, classic margarita, Neapolitan style. Pretty damn good.